No, I think, I think it's, it is a very good thing that the history of this place, which as far as we as a motorism club are concerned, began in 1953, actually goes back a lot longer than that. And uh, facts are still coming to light about what took place. The fact that it was once a ship makes it the only racetrack in the UK, I think, that once bore an HMS designation. Um, concrete too, I believe. But uh, we've kept this bit of it alive, the rest of it, we've got about a third of it here. The other two thirds went back to agriculture after the war. And uh, I think it's really good that we've now commemorated what it was really here for, as opposed to what these roundy roundy car people seem to think it's for. That is the same thing. But uh, we're very glad that you got in touch and uh, we'll keep it shiny and clean when the weather permits. Thank you very much Richard, uh, we greatly appreciate uh, all your uh, time and effort involved in making this a reality. Crow will think it's now 11 years since we first started in this. Well, as regards the history of Kirkistown Airfield, this was Ballyhalbert Airfield's satellite. Ballyhalbert opened at the end of June 1941 and Kirkistown came into action the following month. It was, by, even by satellite airfield standards, it was very heavily associated with Ballyhalbert. And uh, there maybe weren't that many units based here, at least certainly when it came to the RAF. The first unit to be properly headquartered here was number 504 squadron, which flew Spitfires. And it first arrived fully at Kirkistown at the start of 1942. It was a satellite relief landing ground of sorts for Ballyhalbert. It also played a very major role from the summer of 1943 because the Northern Ireland Training School was created here and this was to help train the RAF regiment. Very, very important when it came to airfield defence. That unit carried on until it finally moved to Newton Ards in May 1945. The fleet air arm had also had squadrons here uh, during the, this time in World War II. And uh, there was at one point in 1944 whereby the airfield was even briefly used as a sort of bombing range. But they had to give this up after about a month or so because the, the runways were accidentally suffering bomb damage. There were usual rather strange accidents. There was a Spitfire, for example, that once ended up on the Kirkistown football field. And then in the summer of 1945, Kirkistown, along with Ballyhalbert, officially transferred to the Fleet Air Arm, as Richard said, to become, in this case, HMS Corncrake II. As the Navy used to say, it was a tender to Ballyhalbert, in other words, a satellite. Still was very closely associated with the parent, but then uh, no sooner did the Royal Navy moved in than it very quickly departed. And in naval parlance, Kirkistown was paid off, in other words, effectively closed in January 1946. Now, as will be revealed very shortly on the memorial, we have as the closure date 1946. It may well have been, as happened with Bally Halbert, that the airfield perhaps closed in February of that year, but we just can't be absolutely certain. It's all to do with RAF Coastal Command records. However, we do know that shortly afterwards, as again in the case of Bally Halbert, it was handed over to the Northern Ireland government of the day for storage holding items such as furniture. And then, as Chris Richard will know, eventually the motor racing circuit came into play from 1953. So this is a very famous motor racing circuit here. Kirkistown has played a very big part, not only winning a war and saving lives and so on, but also just generally helping people. But again, this is the case with all of our airfields throughout the United Kingdom. They've made a real difference towards the advancement and betterment of society as a whole. And therefore we can only ask everyone who passes this memorial when they're using the racing circuit or even just passing by 
in the local area to, within reason, just remember and honour and appreciate Kirkistown Airfield and all the people who very bravely served here, including some people who would have lost their lives while serving from this space. Uh, they, they deserve no better uh, than that. Uh, they, they deserve all the help they can get. And therefore it's with uh, very great uh, pleasure that we're now able to unveil what is ABCT's 95th memorial to yet another of these truly unique and irreplaceable places, in this case, Kirkistown Airfield. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.